Hello, this is Sean from Pristine Audio. Today I'm going to be doing a video review of the acoustic bass amp model B300C. This is a 15 inch woofer with a high frequency driver in a wedge floor monitor format. So without further ado, let me start playing the bass through it to show you how it sounds. This is with everything neutral, all the dials in a neutral position with no special effect engaged. And with the bass, everything neutral as well. Never mind the rattle that's coming from the room because this bass amp is putting out some serious low frequency that my room is rattling to. Uh, so let me start going through some other uh, sounds that this bass amp can put out. Uh, let me start by filtering out the high frequency so you can see what the sound, what the difference it makes. So playing some high notes. the high frequency back to neutral now I'm gonna start playing with the mid high here now the mid high is um, all the, cut all the way Bring back a little bit. Gonna boost it to about three o'clock position. Now I'm gonna boost the mid high all the way. Gonna put the mid high back to neutral. To the mid. Right now, the mid is at the neutral position. Gonna cut the mid to about nine o'clock position. Gonna cut the mid all the way. mid back to neutral, it's 12 o'clock position, now I'm going to bring the mid low, uh, play with the mid low, now the mid low is that neutral, the difference uh, miss, uh, the bass is getting reduced now the mid low all the way gonna bring the mid low back gonna start boosting the mid low to three o'clock position the middle all the way let's bring the middle back so now everything is uh, neutral now I'm gonna start playing with the low 
So now low is at neutral. Gonna start cutting the low to three o'clock position. Just gonna play a note and, and move the dial so you can hear the difference real time. I'm gonna boost it now. Uh, it seems to not affect the E string very much. Let's try the, the B string. So the low affects the, the B string quite a bit. Okay, so now with everything neutral, just gonna play, um, gonna play around with the notch frequency filter. So right now I don't have the notch frequency filter engaged. Play and engage this and start playing with the frequency to hear what it does. So engage it now. This adjust the frequency that the notch filter changes. some tunes and play with this. So now I have the notch filter engaged at the 12 o'clock position, which cuts about 500 hertz. So now I'm gonna turn it up, bring the notch frequency to three o'clock position, which is around 700 hertz. Sounds quite a bit different. See how the slap sounds like. Now, what did engage again? So, a little cleaner for slapping with this notch frequency set at um, 3 o'clock position, or approximately. Let's see what setting it all the way at uh, up position does to the sound. Uh, somewhat different. So there's quite a bit of sound that we can get out of this bass amp. Um, this bass amp also comes with the overdrive. Um, just, let me just show you what it sounds like. So with the overdrive engaged, Let's just play with it. Not very much effect because the overdrive um, amount is not very high. So let's just turn it up all the way so to see how it sounds like. Quite a bit louder. Uh, extreme so let's dial back a little bit with both the overdrive and the overdrive level at 12 o'clock to see what it does a little, bit, a little bit of distortion there
to the overdrive type or tone. No, that's just a lot of uh, distortion there. back a little bit to define what's a good balance is. Perhaps 12 o'clock is a good setting. A little bit of distortion but not uh, not overbearing. with the distortion let's turn it off um, so it also has several buttons like the super low and the super high uh, so let me show you what the difference the super low does so here's just a bass note press the super low it boosts the 40 Hertz by 1 dB and cuts of 500 Hertz. Uh, so it just uh, makes it sound a little deeper. So this is with a super low engaged. The room is shaking all over. So turn off the super low. A little bit of difference. Now let's go to the super high. So now I don't have the super high engaged. Um, it mainly uh, helps with the top end spark plug, so we'll do a little bit of slapping here. Now I'm going to engage the super high. difference with a super high. Um, let's, let's try some higher notes. So. Um, you know I can't tell the super high what difference it makes very much at least with this bass. Perhaps with some other pickup with a more sensitive high frequency, it could um, illustrate the difference a little better. Okay, so now that I've gone through the sound palette that this bass amp can uh, bring to the table, I want to show you the design aspect, the physical design aspect of this bass amp. So, uh, As you can see, this sits at a very nice angle, somewhere between um, 30 degrees, around 30 degrees. And there is a connector panel in the back. Let me tilt it up. So it has power over here and linked out, linked in, which I don't use very much myself, effect, send, and effect return. Foot switch and tuner send. It's pretty useful. The switch for um, direct out with an XLR with a pre, EQ pre versus post, and the uh, direct out send level, as well as the ground lift switch here. And here's the speaker out for driving additional uh, cabinets. So I wanna show you a design issue with this particular model. As you can see, the connectors, as you bring it down, Not sure how well you can see, but the cables are pretty close.
And this is particular a problem with the XLR direct out. That is right against the, the floor edge here. So I have an XLR cable that I can show you. So you can see. So when we plug a regular XLR female cable to the direct line out here, guess what's going to happen? It is coming down and is, it is crushing that XLR cable. And I'm not even fully, re, uh, it's not even fully on the floor yet. So, in order for this to work, we need to use a right angle XLR connector in order to utilize this line out in the floor monitor position. So that is one of the design problems with this particular model. I have used a 12 inch version of the acoustic B100C and it has the connectors further from the floor edge when it lays down. So it won't have, doesn't have the same problem. It is only a problem with this 15 inch model. So uh, just beware uh, if you need to use the 15 inch B300C in the floor monitor position. In the line out, you need a right angle XLR female connector to go with it. So lastly, I'm gonna show how, how, uh, how well this place amp transports. So, as you can see, it has two handles, one on each side. And the best way I have found to transport this is not to carry it from the front normally, but to carry, lift this out from the back. Because it's uh, a little easier because of this angle, I could just move like this. So it's not too bad. This weighs about well, a little over six, 60 pounds, which is not that light, but acceptable with two handles. So that's all I have for this base hem for today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.